What's happening, family? It's time to pray. And as we do so, we want to look at Psalm 23 on today as we continue unpacking and looking at the notion of trust. We've been functioning from a working definition. The trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father, one's devotion to God's word, and one's remembrance of the promises of God. Psalm 23 has been a passage that we've been looking at over the last few installments to describe how David is arguing the picture of trust through the artistry of um of seeing God as a shepherd providing for the sheep. We get to take the part of being sheep who see God as a shepherd, but also we get a chance to look at the provisional nature of God who makes sure and guarantees all the reasons why we can have trust in our God. And this is arguing that why can the sheep have complete and intense reliance on their God? Why is it that we can have this implicit sort of dependence knowing that God will provide, knowing that God will continue to be who he is, therefore I can have trust that will not be broken, trust that will not ever remove my reliance on God. Well, the psalm is arguing that text. Notice as we read and then review and get to where we are on today, we'll see just that. Psalm 23, reading from the NIV, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love or mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A beautiful passage, and again, one that we are familiar with, one we have been unpacking, and one in which we are watching David give this picture of trust all the way through the progression of the psalm that illustrates more and more reasons why we can have trust. And notice what we've seen so far in the psalm is that it's arguing the definition of trust. It's arguing the definition of trust in the first few verses where David allows us to picture who God is. God is, the Lord is my shepherd. The reason why we can have this trust is because God, the creator of the world, is my shepherd. Shepherd. He is our in our unique shepherd, one who allows me to exclusively know that I am cared for by the architect of the universe. God is my shepherd. But in addition to that, you, sir, you, you and I have learned through the seasons of life that that same God who is our shepherd has shown himself to be worthy of being relied on. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You remember when we studied that text out of the, out of the second and third verse, that we understood that that concept means that he breaks me to make me. He makes me to shape me. He shapes me to secure me. God, through the ups and downs of my life, through the disciplinary lessons of my life, through the boundaries he's created, through the, the things that, ha that have been good and bad, he's allowed me to understand that he may at, at, may at time have to, have to uh, bring the unruly parts of my life out of me and bring me into order. But as he does so, he only provides green pastures and still waters while he does so. So he is the one who is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. But then I love at verse number four, that even though I go through certain seasons, even though I deal with the shadows of my life, even though I have those moments where my security is in jeopardy because I'm looking at the shadows, I'm looking at all the stuff that I have to go through. I'm going through the valley. I'm going through my issues. I'm going through my seasons. And my God is the one who sees me through. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you 
My God, verse number one, verse number two, my God is with me. God, the provider of the world, is with me. God, the one who sustains me, is with me. God, who only gives me green pastures and still waters, he is with me. So I will fear no evil. That brings us all the way to where we are in verse number five. When we get to verse number five, you then see, you notice that the pivot comes back. We, we've been blessed in the text. If you're watching the focal point of the psalm, the psalmist allows you almost as if you were if you were watching the panoramic view that you get a chance to see the shepherd. You see he, he who he is. You see what he's done. Then it pans in to the sheep and the sheep in, in its valley like moments and its seasons of fear and its seasons of concern and wonder. The sheep is is literally following after the shepherd or the child is holding the hands of their father going through this valley like moment. But then you find that now now the camera, as it were, pans back and you get to see the shepherd again. Now watch what the shepherd is doing. Watch what God the father watch who our our oversight. Watch what he does. He then goes ahead of you to prepare. Verse number five and verse number six are all about looking at what God the shepherd has done. The same God you watch verses one, two, three, and four. Now watch him, verse number five, go ahead. And the whole emphasis of verse five and six is in watching the preparing work of your God. He's going to see, we're going to see at least three things in the text. We only get to, we're only going to get to two of them today, but we're going to see how he prepares the person. He prepares the place and he prepares provisions all for the sheep. Now, remember, this is, this is a shepherd motif. This is a sheep and shepherd motif. So don't come out of that as you look at it, but notice the shepherd running ahead and he runs ahead. Now watch what he's done. He's going to prepare the person, prepare the place, and prepare some provisions for the sheep. Verse number five, one more time, and then we'll unpack it. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Notice in the text that as you think in terms of how God who is the one preparing? He prepares the person. He prepares the place. He prepares the provisions. I'm going to help you to see in verse number five. Notice that God is preparing you. He's preparing you. And he's prepared you really, verses one through four. He's been doing all this work to prepare you and I. But he prepares us, and the text emphasizes that he goes ahead to prepare something for you. As God is preparing for you, the emphasis is that he's marrying the comfort and the fearlessness of verse number four. At the end of verse number four, remember, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Now, verse number four is intended to come right along into verse number five, marrying together because in you, if you can see the comfort and the fearlessness that we have in seeing that God is with me, you need to remember that God who is with you because he's God is always ahead of you. you all say it in your spirit. God who is with me is still always ahead of me. God is always up to something. He's up to something. God is the same one who's right here with me, but he's already ahead of me. He's already fighting battles for me. He's already making provisions for me. He's already in my tomorrow while I'm in my today. He's already getting me through my storm, already drying my tears, already seeing my healing, already celebrating my joy, already bringing me through the monotony of where I am to the glory of what I will be, already giving me the degree, already giving me the next opportunity already God is already always up to something and he does it for you notice he's preparing something for you he is always ahead of you because God is always thoughtful of you do you see this he's ahead of you because he's always got you in mind everything God does he has our well-being in mind everything you need he's got you in mind everything he does he's got you in mind he's 
always preparing ahead of you and he's always doing it because historically God has always worked with the creature in mind. That's what makes this shepherd so amazing. Everything your creator has done, he's done it with you in mind. Every blessing in the world, he's given it with you in mind. Your redemption has been with you in mind. He created a world with you in mind. He gave Jesus with you in mind. Gave the Holy Spirit with you in mind. He's healing with you in mind. Delivering with you in mind. Answering prayers with you in mind. Giving you relationships with you in mind. Giving you friendships with you in mind. That stranger that walked up to you and told you, it's going to be all right, baby. God sent them with you in mind. Everything God has done, he's done it with you in mind. So God, God, God is working. To establish the notion of our ability to trust his goodness, trust his godness, and he's proving himself. How has he done it? Because he made me lie down in green pastures. He's, he's, he's allowed me to sit by still waters. He's brought me through the valley of the shadow of death, and he's helped me to know that I can fear. I need to fear no evil, but he's, all, he's done all of that, and now I can see the shepherd who has provided the this place of unrelenting, unbreakable trust. He is now moving ahead of me and he's preparing more for me and he's always preparing more for me because he's got me in mind. Watch this. Every time it seems like you are in a space where you can't see the God that you know right next to you, what you need to remember is that he might be up the road preparing some stuff for you. When you are in those moments where you can't seem to trace his fingerprints and I don't know where he is and I feel like God isn't right here with me don't trip he might be up the road preparing some stuff for you when you're in those spaces where he's not moving when I want him to move he ain't moving fast enough he's not moving tangibly enough I can't trace him I can't see him I can't smell him I can't hear him I don't know where he is don't worry don't trip he left you in green pastures. He placed you by the still waters. He's made sure you've got plenty to eat and he's up the road preparing something better for you. Your God is always in the move of preparing something for you. He told Israel go to sleep so he could prepare a way through the Red Sea. He told Adam lay it down so he could prepare his Eve. God has always done some stuff where in the space of your stillness he's preparing something for you. Lazarus was in the grave four days because God was preparing his Jesus for him. Are y'all seeing this over and over again? God will have us to be on pause while he prepares. And even in those moments where you think, God, why you got me in this pandemic so long? Why you have me in a holding pattern so long? Why you have me in this monotony so long? Why does it seem like my breakthrough's taking so long? God may put you in a holding pattern because he's up the road, up the timeline, doing some stuff, preparing what you don't know you even see your God up to, but he's preparing a place for you. Watch. The first thing he has to do is prepare you. But then what I love in the text is that after he's prepared us and after he's taught us how worthy he is of our trust, the text pivots again. Verse number five, at the end of verse number four, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse five, thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Ah, now we see what he's preparing. He prepares a table for me. What in the world does he mean here by preparing a table? Notice he's prepared the person. He's, he's getting us to a space where we will trust undeniably that even when I don't see the shepherd near, the shepherd is providing for me. He, he can only do good for me. But then watch, he prepares the place. The place he's preparing in the text is the table. Now, now notice table is a space. The shepherd brings the sheep. And it represents an advantageous place to graze and see any pending threat. 
It, it, it's, a, it's a space, an advantageous space that the shepherd brings the sheep so that they can graze and see any pending threat. Let me tell you what it does not mean so you can get false theology out of your mind. It is not a place. It is not an actual table of gloating like an actual table where you have a dinner and invite your friends or invite your enemies and you eat before them like some of the memes would suggest. It is not that way. God would not do something out of character. He would not place one of his own in a space where they are gloating or bragging or arrogantly shoving something in the face of the enemy. God doesn't work like that. So what is it? Remember that the text is meant to be understood in the motif of a shepherd and sheep-like imagery. So as a shepherd preparing for the sheep, the shepherd goes to a table land. Table is represented as a land, a land that is flat, a land that allows you sheep to graze so that you can see. You can eat and see. What is God doing? He's allowing you and I to be in a place or a space or, or, a, or a space where we can peacefully be provided for, where we can, like sheep, continue to see while we rest and consume. We can we can be in a space, a land where watch what God is doing. The table is all designed so that you can continue to have sight on who your God is. What do you mean by sight? He allows me to have foresight, number one. Foresight, meaning I can eat what God has provided for me on the table land, and I can eat and see what's coming my way. Isn't it awesome how your God will provide for you in such a way where the things he's brought you through and the lessons he's taught you will allow you now to see the enemy from afar off. The table land is a space where God has allowed you to understand what's coming. He allows you through the things you've learned to watch and be able to see the enemy from afar off. I can here. First Peter chapter five and verse number eight, where Peter describes how God has done all of what he's done for you, how he's blessed you. And he's, uh, and we cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. And then in verse number eight, he says, be sober and be vigilant right on the heels of saying, give everything to God because he cares for you. And he watches you. He then says, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. God blesses us to not only be able to give everything to him, I'm giving it all to you. And I trust you, but I'm still watching. I'm eating and I'm watching. I'm, I'm being provided for, but I'm watching. I've got foresight. I need to, we need to be able to see the enemy coming from afar off. But not only does the table land provide foresight, the table land intuitively allows me to have upside because I know what's coming. I know who's got me. I know that the shepherd is always near. I know that the shepherd hadn't left me. I know that his rod and his staff is still with me. I know that he's already prepared some stuff. I I know that if anything is coming my way, he's going to handle it. I know that I'm not built. I'm not equipped. I'm not able to handle fighting off lions and tigers and bears and wolves. But oh, I got a shepherd. I've got a shepherd who can fight what I cannot fight. I've got a shepherd who can beat what I cannot beat. I've got a shepherd who can protect what I cannot protect myself. I've got a shepherd who allows me to practice my posture of dependence while he practiced his posture of deliverance. I've got a shepherd who fights while I just have faith. I've got a shepherd who protects while I just pray. I've got a shepherd who will slay while I submit. I've got a shepherd who continues to allow me to have salvation as I surrender. My posture is to depend. His posture is to deliver and I'm going to take the position of a sheep and let him be my shepherd. So I'm going to watch my foresight. I'm, I'm going to watch my upside. But praise God, he also blesses me on the table land to have insight. What I love about the text is that he didn't just prepare a table for me, but then he also anoints my head with oil. Watch this. Watch this. Here in this place, while I'm at the table, he allows me to have provisions to see my enemy from afar off. The things that are obvious, the things that are coming. 
I can watch the silhouette of the wolf moving this way. I can, I can see and hear the bear crunching through the brush. I, I, I can hear the roar of the lion. I, I, I hear the prowls of the, of the angry dogs. I, I hear all of these obvious enemies. But he doesn't just do that on the table and see, on the table and he allows me to see everything, the obvious stuff, but he also anoints my head with oil for the subtle things. The shepherd knows the sheep have a tendency to have bacteria to infect their snout and that bacteria will affect their snout and the skin of the sheep and will begin to create ringworms and, and deteriorate and cause infections and sickness throughout the sheep. And so in order to prevent those kind of micro microbes that will destroy the sheep from the inside, the, the obvious stuff they can see, the subtle stuff they cannot see, but the shepherd provides for the obvious, but he also provides for the subtle. He will anoint their head with Oil. The oil is designed to cover and fight the things that you cannot see, the subtleties. And aren't you glad how God not only provides for the obvious fight against the enemy, but praise God for the subtle defense that he gives us by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of his word, by the power of prayer. That's the reason why when you and I go to God in prayer, we are fighting the unseen through the power of the unseen. Faith cannot be seen. Prayer Words cannot be seen. The word of God and its effect cannot always be seen. But what you can know is that as you go to God in prayer, as you trust in God with faith, as you depend on his word and live out the lyrics of the scripture, God is fighting a fight you cannot see. Remember that the war is always taking place. The enemy wants to destroy you, but God is with you. And God will fight what you cannot see. He'll fight what you can see. He's basically reminding us over and over again, whether it's obvious or subtle, I am your shepherd. So you can trust me. You can trust me on this table land to provide everything that you need. The table is prepared by God who brought you through your pain to perspective. He brought you through your problems so that you can have peace. He's prepared the person. He's prepared the place. And we're going to learn that he's prepared provisions. But as we take this stop right now, notice that as God has prepared this place and prepared the person, prepared us, we can have trust in our God. Remember, trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father, one's devotion to God's word, and one's remembrance of his promises. Remember what God has promised you in this text. He is your shepherd. You shall not want. He makes you to lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside still waters. He restores your soul. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you ought not fear any evil for God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. That God is making sure that you know you can have sight, foresight, upside, and insight, which helps you to trust in him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for contending on our behalf. Thank you for being our God who is the one who shepherds us through the difficulties of our life. Thank you, Father, for all of what you've done. Thank you for this text that reminds us that we can have complete and intense reliance on you. And we know, Father, that our relationship with you, our devotion to your word, and our remembrance of your promises helps to undergird and facilitate stronger faith in who you are. God, we pray that you bless us today to walk with you, to, to follow you as you continue to provide for us. Thank you, Lord God, for going ahead of us in life. Thank you for always being the one who is the contender, the fighter, the warrior of our lives. Lord God, thank you for never losing a battle. Thank you for always being good. Thank you for being our God no matter what. We love you, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you. And we ask, oh God, that you get yourself some glory as we continue to lean in on you. Help us, Father, 
to be a people who manifest trust in you. Help us to help others to trust in you. Thank you for always having us in mind and help us, Lord God, to keep you on our minds. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray. Amen. And amen. Listen, keep on trusting in God. He is providing. He will provide. He's had you in mind from the very beginning, and he will continue to lead us all the way through. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Call me long.